I'm going to be playing you a short video, about five minutes long, and it's highlighting a very important scientific concept around the pandemic that has gone missed. What I want you to do is to watch the video, and I genuinely want to hear what you think, whether or not this is a strategy we can use to help to bring complex ideas in a realistic and real world format. So please, let's hear what you have to say afterwards. Let's go with this. What if I told you the country with the worst healthcare system in the Western Hemisphere had 40 times fewer COVID deaths than America, and they did it with only 2.7% vaccinated? This is a story they don't want you to know. 837 total COVID deaths out of 11.4 million people. That's roughly seven deaths per 100,000. The United States, over 300 per 100,000. Dr. Patrick Daly was Haiti's Director of Epidemiology from 2018 to 2022. He expected 60,000 deaths. We lost fewer than a thousand souls. That's absolutely incredible. Imagine working 22 hour days, sleeping only two hours, fighting to save your country, and then being completely ignored when you succeed. That's exactly what happened to Dr. Daly and his staff. Before the WHO announcement, before most countries even acknowledged the threat, Haiti was already monitoring. They blocked flights, they prepared. After the 2010 earthquake destroyed everything, followed by a devastating cholera outbreak, Haiti rebuilt a modern health surveillance network. International agencies provided technical assistance, funding, training, and resources. 85% real-time reporting. The Haitians were watching, waiting. We were the first in all decisions. But here's where it gets really interesting. To understand Haiti's miracle, we need to go back to the 1950s. American children were being paralyzed by polio, 21,000 in 1952 alone. Meanwhile, in poorer countries, kids played in the dirt and very few got polio. Scientists at that time were curious and investigated. They discovered something shocking. Children exposed early, while protected by their mother's antibodies, gained lifelong immunity. Better hygiene actually made rich kids more vulnerable. Sound familiar? Haiti's population lives with constant pathogen exposure. Dengue, cholera, you name it. Their immune systems speak a different language. Cross immunity. Our immune systems know how to negotiate with new threats. And 60% of the population is under 24. Wait, let me make sure I heard you right. 60% of Haitians are under 24? Fewer elderly people mean fewer targets for COVID. While Americans retreated indoors where the virus spreads best, Haitians continued their outdoor lives, sunshine, fresh air, organic food. While Americans panic bought toilet paper, Haitian grandmothers were brewing the same time tea their ancestors used for centuries, and it worked. No clinical trials, no FDA approval, just centuries of folk wisdom keeping people calm and at home. And here's the craziest part. Haiti achieved this with only 2.7% vaccinated. Even most healthcare workers refused the shots. Most of our healthcare workers didn't believe in vaccines. They saw it as a political game. Their skepticism, born from decades of broken promises, accidentally aligned with their natural advantages. The result? One of the pandemic's greatest success stories. But the most disturbing thing? There was no attempt to study Haiti's success. The WHO sent one congratulatory letter, then silence. No research teams, no funding, nothing. Why? Could it be because Haiti's success went against the narrative that only vaccines and lockdowns could save us? Think about it. If a country with the worst healthcare system in the Western Hemisphere beat COVID using sunshine, traditional medicine, and natural immunity, what does that say about the trillions spent? 
Haiti's miracle isn't really a miracle. It's what happens when natural immunity meets smart leadership and local wisdom. Their success reveals an uncomfortable truth. Different populations have different strengths. Standardized solutions might be making things worse. The next pandemic is coming, and we can't afford to ignore Haiti's lessons because they don't align with a medical industrial profit narrative. We have the data, we have the experience, we are ready to share. If this shocked you as much as it shocked me, share this video. Because if we don't learn from Haiti's success, we're going to repeat our mistakes. And next time, we might not be so lucky. So yes, this is an important topic. And it's not just related to Haiti, because I've recently been doing some research with another country, Madagascar, and it seems as though the principle and the premise of good outcomes occurring in parts of the world that didn't follow the narrative is largely ignored. The, the reason it's so important is because, as I keep on explaining to people, the virus is still circulating. It is evading the latest vaccines. At the moment, in highly vaccinated regions, they have very little options. And so this is not a time about just whether or not they were right and others were wrong. This is about trying to find very useful, practical solutions that worked for them and could work for others. It will require a degree of humility. Ego will have to be put aside. But at the end of the day, if we can save lives, is it not worth it? And so the question now is, and you can put it in the comments, did that short video help to capture the essence as to what we're trying to put across. The link is in the description for the full video, which is almost an hour long as an interview. But in reality, that it it's difficult to get these complex concepts in a time where people don't have that much attention to detail. And so by putting it all together in a video like this, my hope is that we can get these important scientific questions and concepts across. I'd be very appreciative if you let me know, did it work? Um, while we're thinking about that, here is one comment. Haiti's ICU ward seem very modern and well-equipped. That's a very good point. Maybe that should be tweaked. It looked almost too modern. Um, that's a good point. Um, Sami says the success is because of the free market, free market capitalism for health, medicine, drugs, and everything else. Um, Thank you, good morning. Great video from Cynthia. No elephant, no problem. And um, this is one of the points I'd always said, as well as ivermectin, their use helps. I did actually go into detail on that. And I did ask uh, Dr. Delhi about the ivermectin use. And his view was that it's not actually that broadly used across the population. It's in quite localized area. He doesn't think people had that much access to it. So it's quite likely that they had other remedies plus very good cross immunity. He highlighted even dengue, which circulates, doesn't really affect the population. So there's very something very unique about that population. And it highlights, again, the principle that one style or one approach does not necessarily suit everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Steph. Please, yes, hit the like button. This is why I need the comments, because these stories and these pieces of scientific information are largely unseen by the general population. They have no idea that this is occurring. And if they only watch the news, they would think that all the success could only have come from one source. My job is to ensure that we get to the scientific truth, even if that is inconvenient to our narrative. At the end of the day, we've got to find solutions. We've got to find ways of making a difference. And more than ever now, we need them 
for populations who are still being continuously affected by ongoing viral circulation. Have a great evening.